Emmanuel, how's it going? Great, my friend. How are you? Not too bad. Now, this fight was going to happen. It was the very first thing to be cancelled during this pandemic. The weigh-ins were done. You were there. It was on. It was off. There was going to be fans. There was going to be no fans. And because of the way this tournament works, you have had your sights on Daniel Weichel for... Like you've like the last guy said, you've been out over a year. You've had your sights set on Daniel Weichel almost the entire time. How do you feel towards this man now? Uh, the same. Uh, like I said, I just stayed hopeful and was praying for, for him, for myself, for everyone else, and for the opportunity to be able to do this. Um, this was such a crazy thing that happened in the world and very unfortunate and confusing. And un during these unprecedented times, we didn't know what to expect uh, of what was going to happen or what could happen. But uh, I just stayed positive and uh, I'm a strong man of God. So I just stayed praying for everyone in the moment. And I'm glad that we uh, were finally here and we're able to make it happen. Uh, throughout that whole time, I just knew, okay, with even a, you know, a, a year long layoff, uh, we got to go through hell to get to heaven, right? So, I mean, the, the more we got to wait, that in suffering builds character and with patience goes perseverance. And now it's just makes that moment much sweeter when I get the victory and I feel this, so. Perhaps the answer is obvious, I don't know, but I'll ask it anyway. What's the difference between, uh, you know, 2016 when you guys were last uh, in the cage together and now? I'd have to say all the training that went into that, my my nutrition, so not even just of how I'd make the weight and weight cutting, you know, my, my nutrition, that was a big thing. A lot of other people ask me too, what's uh, so different about my game? And that's my uh, significant other, Stacy Blythe. And through our um, uh, parallel greatness company that we have built up, being able to help uh, my other teammates as well too, make championship weight, no problem and be able to perform at our best. So for me, it was not, uh, I would say, lack of skill, more so uh, being able to put that into my game was like a supplement to, to my game to help in, enhance and fuel my body to, to, to perform at its best potential. And uh, I believe I've showed that a lot in uh, my most recent fights and the growth and experiences, and I'm thankful for the, the victories, but also even in the losses as well too, that's what's helped me grow as a fighter and as a man. So I've used that going into my training and each and every single one of those fights as well, too. And now I'm excited to go out there and show that again on Thursday night. Really? So I was asked that, what would I do with a million? And of course, everyone asked me to go all out. But uh, God has uh, you know, blessed me with this moment and this opportunity to be on this platform. And I feel so undeserving of it. But knowing that I've been able to receive all this then it is better to give than to receive so i know i would be able to go and help people in mixed martial arts people who uh you know in children's hospitals people and who are in losing their faith people who are in dealing with ailments so that's what i plan to do with this hey emmanuel i have uh, this one for you here you're you're fighting with your opponent again but you got to talk to me what does the word the matador mean to you like why would you pick that that nickname so I got that nickname from my coach, Duke Rufus. Uh, that flies back all the way to 2014 before I uh, made my Bellas Ready view. And I was starting on the rise with him, uh, fighting locally in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I didn't have a nickname then. I just was sticking to my, you know, my strong name of Emmanuel Sanchez. And uh, it came from the earliest boxers in my day that uh, he really wanted me to emulate and fight like Jorge Linares. Oscar De La Hoya, Canelo Alvarez. I know you see that in Ryan Garcia and some of the slickest, smoothest boxers. And likewise in, in Muay Thai as well too. And as they say, the bull is stronger, but the matador is smarter. So even the, the greatest Muhammad Ali went out and said that. And I believe that I live up to that moniker. So obviously in through uh, you know the country of Spain and uh, it's uh, the bullfighter, but and in Mexico, I would see like uh, they have it something different. It'd be the killer. But for me, it's, uh, it's someone who goes out there and you, uh, I know someone's going to go out there and try to take my head off and want to kill me. But float like a butterfly, sting like a bee and the hands can't hit what the eyes can't see. So I'm going to be like a ghost in there and uh, don't get hit. You can't touch this. You know what I'm saying? Like Rick James. But I know I want to fight like one of the toughest, come forward, grittiest fighters 
but be also one of the slickest fighters in this era and in this time.